I'm gonna open up Microsoft Paint to explain this. I've I've um I made a video on this a long time ago, and it's a really, really important concept. So let's say that and I'm not a good artist, so you're gonna have to bear with me. Let's say this is your this is your table. You got your opponent right here, and you got you playing right here. And again, excuse my terrible drawing. If you land a ball, I guess like right in the middle of the table right here, and your opponent is playing, you're allowing him to play right here or whoops, or right here. Basically, you're giving him the opportunity to play really, really wide angles. And of course, he can play anywhere in between that as well. You're giving him a lot of angles to work with. And so because of that, it's really, really predictable. Now let's go back. If you play, for example, right into this corner, your opponent can still play down the line. They can play this way, parallel down the line. But of course, they cannot play this way where the ball is actually moving away from you. The widest they can play is parallel to the table down the line. And more than likely, they're going to bring it slightly cross court somewhere in this area so basically it makes it a lot more predictable to play and so the reason i'm bringing it up is when you are trying to execute tactics in your game it's not enough to have the tactic in mind and just try to play it the shot leading up to your tactic also needs to be really really high quality so if your push is landing in the middle of the table you're not going to be able to execute your strategy as well as you want to Hey guys, what's going on? It's Louie Louie here, and welcome back to my VOD review series. I've got a submission from Alex, so he is going to be first person to get a match reviewed with the new format. If you are interested in having one of your own matches reviewed, then make sure to watch my video, which has instructions, which will be linked in the description. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So let's do a little bit of reading here. Um... Alex plays with a Viscaria, Super ALC, pretty normal setup, 1500 to 1800 goals. Last two years was to develop the backhand drive and loop, enough to receive serves and play rallies. And last three months, been practicing serving a lot. So long fast, go serve, and current goal is to create a system or style. Okay, awesome. And to craft five to ten different schemes and stick to them during the match. I really like that. Uh, kind of like one sequence, serve, plus first shot, plus second shot. I believe I should be prepared before the game starts and just follow a plan. Because I usually play well in the beginning of a match, but endings are my weak side. Opponents get used to serving, and then I lose my advantage. I am disappointed. Um, so I haven't watched the match yet, but um, I actually really like this. And something I'm going to point out right away when it comes to strategy is you also have to know how to adapt your strategy so let's say you're playing a player you're pretty familiar with his game and so you go into the game with a strategy and you follow that strategy and it works but then the opponent starts to catch on to your strategy and changes you don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over again you have to have kind of a plan b a plan c and multiple different tactics that you can go to in situations where your plan A has stopped working. Uh, but anyway, I'll get more into this once I'm looking at the match. Practice frequency is really good as well. Three times a week, couple hours a day with different partners. Warm up for 30 minutes, exercises 40 minutes, and then a best of five match. That's awesome. And then one time per week, local tournament with players above me. That is awesome as well. An additional context, I used to play for four years when I was in school. So my forehand technique and surf was developed in the late 2000s. So then I had to pause for the 10 years and back to the table for the last three years. I tend to play against attackers. We have long rallies. I love to play far from the table. I'll send you another video after Saturday's tournament for view against strong. Awesome. And then this game was below, was the final of a local tournament for amateurs. I was favorite from the beginning, but lost in the final. Opponent uses short pimples on the backhand and has weird technique. And it was very warm in the hall, so balls were wet. I hate that. Um, 
I know exactly what you're talking about. That's never fun. I played against him before this year. One last four times. Fast serve. Fast serve back in. Finish top spin. Okay. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and get right into it. My power cut right as I was about to start watching. So I am back. I have not watched anything yet. So I am going into this blind. Our protagonist is the player in the white shirt. And let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to watch for a little bit um, so I can kind of gather my thoughts before I give any advice. So, let's take a Okay, right away. So, um, I'm going to watch more about your server turn, but on your own serve. You said your plan was to serve fast to the back end, right? Um, I'm going to put this in slow motion and show you something. Um, look at where your serve lands. You go frame by frame. Your serve... landed right here on the table so he doesn't have to move deep into this corner and when he returns it luckily he doesn't play the best shot but his shot comes right here instead of out longer so it makes it much difficult for you to much more difficult for you to loop so basically just make sure when you are trying to serve long and fast that it's really long and fast so first bounce should be right here second bounce should literally be right here on the table and that's going to make his shot quality his return was already pretty low quality that's going to make his return even lower quality and then you're not going to have to play this shot which against a higher level player you play like this they're just going to kill it you're not going to have to play that shot if the first serve is just a little bit cleaner a little bit longer. So let's go ahead and put that back into normal speed. Yeah, same thing on that surf. Nice, that was good. It was a nice serve, and so you got an easier ball to loop. Alright, so I'm going to give you a tactic against his serve. He's done the same thing a few times. Um, let me go back to the first couple points. So it's almost the same thing as when you're serving to him. He's giving you a lot of side spin. Sometimes it has a lot of top spin. Sometimes it has um, underspin, but it's always got a little bit of side spin. And when he's doing this serve... See, that one is side with a little bit of under. Um, it's almost like when you're serving. So, you pushed and your push landed right here. So, you may have a, a tactic. Let's say, let me go back. Let me see what your tactic was. Um, I'm curious. Next time you, next time you submit a video, um... I want to know every tactic that you had in mind going into the match so that I can see fully whether you were executing them or not. But I'm assuming that you had a sort of tactic here, um, similar to what you were trying to do on your surf. But if your push lands in the middle of the table, it doesn't set anything up. Um, I'm going to open up Microsoft Paint to explain this. I've, I've, um, I made a video on this a long time ago. And it's a really, really important concept. So let's say that, and I'm not a good artist, so you're going to have to bear with me. Let's say this is your, this is your table. You got your opponent right here and you got you playing right here. Again, excuse my terrible drawing. If you land a ball, I guess like right in the middle of the table right here, 
and your opponent is playing, you're allowing him to play right here or whoops or right here. Basically, you're giving him the opportunity to play really, really wide angles. And of course, he can play anywhere in between that as well. You're giving him a lot of angles to work with. And so because of that, it's really, really predictable. Now let's go back. If you play, for example, right into this corner, your opponent can still play down the line. They can play this way, parallel down the line. But of course, they cannot play this way where the ball is actually moving away from you. The widest they can play is parallel to the table down the line. And more than likely, they're going to bring it slightly cross court somewhere in this area. So basically, it makes it a lot more predictable to play. And so the reason I'm bringing it up is when you are trying to execute tactics in your game, it's not enough to have the tactic in mind and just try to play it. The shot leading up to your tactic also needs to be really, really high quality. So if your push is landing in the middle of the table, you're not going to be able to execute your strategy as well as you want to. Very good. Um, even on your loops, I think... Your forehand technique is very good. Your backhand technique needs a little bit of work. I'm not going to get too much into the technique right now because there's other things going on. Um, but even on the loops, like the forehand loop there, your placement was really good. This is the backhand loop. Look at your placement on the backhand loop. Um, show you one more time. It lands right in the middle of the table. So again, it just makes it harder to... If you're trying to do combinations where it's like one to the backhand, one to the middle, and then one really deep to the backhand, you can't do that if your ball is coming to the middle because you have no idea where your opponent's playing. Ooh. That was a really bad misread on his surf. Um, especially 1500 to 1800 level. That is never a surf that you should be misreading. So, um, let's go frame by frame. Watch his contact, and I can see that you are looking at his contact. Actually, I can't tell if you're looking at the ball or at his contact point, but whenever someone tosses the ball, you should never, ever, ever be looking right here. That's bad. Your eyes should be down here watching his paddle so that you can see exactly where he hits the ball. Um, but look, going frame by frame here, um, watch his paddle. Look at the contact. Look at the paddle. That's a top spin serve. You read it as underspin. It pops it up. I'll show you one more time. I guarantee if you were watching his paddle the whole time and let the ball bounce just a little bit more, you would have been able to catch the top spin. Good shot. Nice. That was very clean. Um, there's small things. I'm not going to nitpick them because, like I said, there's other things I want you to work on. Uh, like the push quality is still not perfect, but the loop was very good. The placement was good. Nice. You read that one a lot better. All right, so good, um, good serve there, and it looks like you actually won that game. You have conditioned him into being super aware of the fact that you serve here, or try to serve here almost every point. So like I said, having a tactic is good, but you have to be able to adapt while you're playing. So the next time you play this guy, I want to see you have a similar strategy, but with more variation. So maybe occasionally 
serve extremely short right here. Not every time because, again, you're, you've you got your tactic, but once or twice per game, one serve right here. And then once or twice per game, one that's really deep to the middle. And then these serves that are very deep to the corner, kind of setting up your bread and butter, are going to be twice as effective because he can't just sit on this and guess because he's also got to worry about the potential of you serving here or here. And he's not watching necessarily. No, no one below 2,000 watches. Everyone just reacts. And he's just reacting to your serve right now. So just slight variations are going to make a huge difference. It's a really spinny loop. I really like that shot. The other thing you're doing on your serve return is you're not watching, not letting the ball bounce. Um, especially if you're not sure whether you want to push or hit. It, it's almost, the easiest way to explain it is you're giving him more credit than he deserves on the serve by rushing into it. You'd be surprised how long his serves come if you actually let them bounce a little bit. And it's also going to give you a lot more time to... Um, set up a good shot but you can see that's super super rushed i'll go back um go frame by frame so also i can tell that you were not watching the racket you were watching the ball because at this point you should already let me let me backtrack a little bit at this point the reason that your shot is so rushed is because you're reacting to his serve and there was no anticipation of the fact that the ball was coming right here. So what that means is everything else ends up being super, super rushed, almost like a panic. Oh crap, it's coming short. Like this, like lo look how long it takes you to recognize that the ball is coming short. No, 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 no. St okay, now you're moving toward the short forehand and the ball is already over the net and you still haven't recognized that it's short now you're thinking loop 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 oh crap it's short and so you're really really rushed on that shot and you miss into the net if you had gone back and just watched while he was serving if your eyes were right here then you probably would have been able to catch that the ball was short right here and already be stepping into that shot. Uh, let's keep going. Mm. So I've noticed this a couple times. I am going to talk about the technique on your back end. Your feet, um, you tend to go back onto your heels when you're looping. So you can kind of see your weight right now as you're playing the shot is going backwards. Um, Look at your body. You're falling backwards and your back is straight up right now as you play that shot. So it's uncomfortable. But more importantly, because all of your momentum is going this way, you lose a lot of quality on your shot. And it lands right here, which is not a good spot for your loop to land, especially against someone with a good forehand. Um, as expected, he just kills that ball. So, um, I'm, I'm going to give you some notes on some ways you can practice that, but I just wanted to point it out so that you can see it. So, this is actually another example. I think, I don't know whether or not you were trying to give this variation in your serve, but... You gave this very wide serve out to the back end, and it forced a completely different return, a return you haven't seen the whole game. But I don't think you were ready for this return because either you were trying to serve long and fast and it just drifted wide so it caught you by surprise, or you were trying to change up the serve but you didn't have a follow-up strategy after that serve. It's twice you've missed the surf. Um, ah.
Better back end quality was better. Ooh, that was bad. Um, I know you won the point there. So let's talk about this. Same serve that you did a couple points ago. And so this time there is absolutely no reason that his return catches you by surprise. Um, and yet, for some reason, it's the same result. You're very lucky to win that point because that return was really, really low quality. And luckily, you played a good forehand. Um, and then you got lucky again. Maybe you didn't win it. I was not watching. Yeah, you didn't even win the point. Um, I don't know why I thought you did. But, and I don't want to give you too much to work on right now. There's a couple things with the technique that are really holding you back. But I want to see you try and fix just a few big things first before I even get into the technique. But you're missing so many serves here that I think I could have given you no advice at all. And you would have won the match if you had just been a little bit more consistent on the serve. Yeah, like there, the, these couple points that you, lost, that you have lost are technique issues. Um, that one is, well, it's uh, a technique issue. That's really bad. Okay, so. He gives you a side topspin serve to your backhand. And I think same thing, you're just not watching entirely. But you're really, really late to do anything. So like, he serves, and just count how long it takes, um, count how many frames it takes you um, to recognize this. I just, I just paused to check. This video is at 60 frames per second. So count how many frames it takes for you to react to this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Now you're in your ready position. You should have been in your ready position before he served. So 14 frames to get into ready position. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Now you're starting to move. 24 frames. And that's really, really late to play a shot. So there are 60 frames per second. It took you 24 frames to react. That means it took you almost half a second to react to that serve properly and i guarantee your reaction time is better than half a second um 90 year olds have quicker reaction times than this so it's not a reaction time issue it's a mental issue of not one not being in oops um eh, we'll give you a subscribe um not being in the ready position early enough and then because of that trying to do absolutely everything at the last second because you're reacting to everything instead of anticipating i guarantee if you anticipate you could have had that this shot if it's what you're going to play ready as the ball was still on his side and you probably would have caught that it was topspin earlier and not even played this push yeah that's that's really bad yeah same thing i'm going to show you one more time because this is your one of your biggest issues right now all right, watch. I'm going to wait until he makes contact, and I'm going to count the number of frames it takes. So there's contact. Oops, go back a little bit. So there's contact. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're thinking back end right now. Eight, nine, ten. You're still thinking back end. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Now you're moving to your forehand. So 19 frames there, which is, yeah, 0.31. That's better, um, but it's still slow because it means you're just reacting to his serve instead of anticipating that it's going there. Um, and like I said, there's some technique problems with the, with the footwork there, which I'll get into next time, but I want you to kind of just focus on one thing at a time right now. Let's go back to full speed. Ooh, what was that? 
Hello. So, I know that you have the strategy to serve deep to the backhand and follow up. You had a gr that was your best serve all match and you were surprised by his return. I think that because your serve was so much better there, you weren't expecting the default um placement. No, you got to kill that. No, you on the point but still. I'm going to show you one other thing. This is kind of, um, I don't want to say a trick, but this serve that he just gave you is the easiest ball in the world to flick, and everyone is just too scared to do it. Um, all you have to do on this ball, I know you know how to play a forehand block. Imagine you meet your paddle to the ball just like this, and then you just move your paddle forwards that way. That's all you have to do. Don't move it up and down. So I'm going to open up paint again so that you can kind of visualize it. Um, so here's the table. Draw it. Oops. Here's the table. Here's the ball. And here's your paddle. All you have to do to flick that ball is move the paddle towards the ball and forwards. You don't want any vertical movements. You don't want to be moving the paddle up or down. You just want to be moving it basically left or right, forwards and backwards. Um, so this is fine. Don't move it like this. And basically drive the ball forwards as if you're blocking. And it is the easiest shot in the world to just flip deep to the corner. And I guarantee if you do that, you'll be like, whoa, that was actually really effortless, and you'll win the point right away. Um, it just mean, um, You just need to recognize that that's topspin and anticipate that ball a little bit earlier. Yeah, there, like, you win the point. It's just, I would have won that point without needing to loop, and that's the difference. Yeah, a lot, a lot of technique issues on the back end. Good serve. Yeah. You can't play any sort of str like you're trying to play these combinations and you can't because the shots leading up to your kind of bread and butter are not high enough quality to get predictable returns. Like there as well. Like like great job looping. But your loop landed right here. And he's just sitting on it. If your loop lands right here, or even right here, then you're chilling, and you got nothing to worry about. But this is like the absolute danger zone. Do not loop in the middle of the table like that. It is just asking for the ball to get swatted past you. That was a really good serve. Same thing though, it's like... When your serve is really good... We're, we're in a ping pen now. When your serve is really good here, like, like what I explained earlier in the video with the angles, he absolutely cannot play this angle. It's impossible. And it makes it much more likely that he's just going to play right here cross court. So when your serve is really good like that, it actually allows you to cheat a little bit more. But because not all of your serves when you're trying to go here land here, you're not used to what the default return looks like and so it keeps catching you by surprise mm, yeah anticipation the placement on the loop same thing on that i, I want to see you flip that ball Another thing I want to point out, and I know I'm nitpicking a little bit, every time you've stepped around and played your forehand, you've played it into his pips. Yes, he has a pretty good forehand, but you should still, your forehand, I'd actually say is better than his forehand, and your backhand is definitely your weaker shot. You should be playing cross court more, um, or, or not, not necessarily cross court, but when you get this ball where you're pivoting, you should be playing it down the line more 
and then just expecting a cross-court rally. I think you're going to be a lot more comfortable playing on this diagonal than you are playing on this diagonal, where he's playing with his pips and you tend to be dizzy sometimes. That was a really good serve. That was good. Nice. His pips, by the way, almost look like they're playing like medium or long pips. Those are some weird short pips. It's not bad. If losing a point like that, I'm happy with. Like that was a really, really well played point, even though you lost it. I'd, I'd rather you lose like this, where. It, feels like you should have landed the shot, then you lose the point and it's just like you're lost in the sauce or you're missing because you're not sure what's going on out there as well. It's like you're not expecting it. You're reading the serve a lot better. Nice, really good, really good. Nice. You're on the roll. Yeah, I can tell that you are a stronger player than this guy. I can see why you beat him in the past. It's just a lot of unforced errors. And I think, and even even there on this ball that's pretty slow, there's no anticipation. It's like. My cat's meowing, so excuse that if you hear him in the background, but look how long it takes you f to recognize, like, also look at your feet, um, but look how long it takes you to recognize, and then because of that, all you can do is play a push, and then, uh, I'm going to skip forward. I don't want to skip too far. There we go. All right. It's so the next shot. Same thing. Look how long it takes for you to start moving towards that ball. You start moving here when the ball is already on your side of the table. So. Because of that, you are really, really late. Your footwork's all over the place, and you have to play this really difficult shot, which if you land it, it's like, wow, great shot. That's a tough shot to land. But if you watch a high-level player do that same thing, it's gonna they wouldn't have to play this crazy shot. It would just look really effortless, and you'd be like, how are they beating this guy so easily? It's like they're not even working hard. It's because they're not. They're just anticipating everything. That was actually a good miss. Um, you anticipated that a lot better. Look, you were ready. You missed because of your feet. Well, look how close together your feet are when you're looping. That's that's no good. Um, but it was a better miss. Crashing on that surf return. A lot of the same mistakes. Yeah. Ooh, nice reverse. <laughs> that was a good reverse. You should have used that more. Um, all right, I got a lot of notes for you. So let's see. Um, what is this? Firstly, when you are serving, you need to be hyper aware of where your serve is actually landing if you're trying to set up combinations doesn't work if you cannot predict where your opponent is going to play when you are receiving serves 
you need to do a better job of watching the opponent's racket, not the ball. And by the time, or I'll say for now, eventually, once you're at a really high level, I'll have notes basically saying, by the time they make contact with the ball, you should know where it's going. But for now, I'm going to say by the time or before the ball leaves their side of the table, you need to know where it is going and what shot you are going to play. And very similar theme in the rallies. When you are looping, pushing, doing anything in a rally, you need to be hyper aware of where your shot is going so that you can set up your combinations easier. Now, um, what I want you to do is focus only on these three points for now. Um, a, a mistake a lot of players get into when they're trying to improve is they will focus on too many things at once and so nothing gets better. We need to fix these three things first and then we can start to work on some of the other stuff. Um, and what I want you to do as part of your exercise routine. So you said you play three times a week, you warm up for 30 minutes, exercise for 15 minutes and play a, um, a best of five match. This is your new practice, um, new practice routine. New practice routine. Everything is good. Before you warm up for 30 minutes, practice serve placement for 15 minutes. Warm up for 30 minutes, exercise for 40 minutes, and then a best of five match. If you're short on time, if you can only play for a maximum of two hours, then you can get just for now either shorten the best of five match and turn it into actually yeah um if short on time turn the best of five match into a best of three and that is all i'm going to leave you with for now like i said there's some other things that we need to work on but let's just focus on this stuff for now I hope that was helpful. Um, I really do want to see another video from you because your game is very good and you do have a lot of potential to improve quickly. We just need to iron out some of these issues. And thank you everyone else for watching as well. If you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up. And like I said, if you want to have one of your own videos reviewed, go watch my video with instructions. Thank you all for watching and until next time.